Hello, Vinyl Community. This is Mervyn Than Hell. We're Shell. Um, doing vinyl finds on location. So, um, I my general idea, uh, as I do videos every Monday now, is to do vinyl finds on the last Monday of every month. So it'll be kind of an encapsulating, um, you know, the best vinyl finds I found in the month of whatever. Um, I'm gonna do vinyl finds a week early for January because I am at the Chicagoland CD and Records show. Um, the, I believe, largest record show in the Midwest, happens every two months. I've only been to this thing once before and it was seven years ago because every time it comes around, it's either like the week I gotta pay rent or it's somebody's birthday or it's the record store day weekend or it's like, Chris, it's like right after Christmas and there's just like, there's never any good time for me to go and the thing is, it's like, I can't walk in there with only 20 bucks, you know? Like, it's, I gotta have some walking around cash to make it worth the drive out here to shop it, you know? Um, and that's exactly what happened last time I came, um, where, you know, I had enough money, I got a lot of records that I was super excited about, and I actually, I was curious, because as you guys know, uh, I flip and turn around records quite often, and, I was curious to see if I still had all the records from that trip seven years ago. And I bought four LPs and one seven inch. And the only thing I don't have anymore is a seven inch because I purged a lot of my seven inches out. Um, but the four 12 inches I got, which were, um, I wanted to show it in the video, but I actually don't know if I'll be able to make a video when I'm home. So we're doing it in the car. Um, but I got the Lorita Mitsuko No Comprendo LP, the KMFDM through a Cold Colt split 12 inch. Um, the Tones on Tail pop record and the Trip Shakespeare um, Across the Universe LP. Blue vinyl, original promo cut. Um, got all those the last time I went and I still have all those records. So I kept that energy coming today where I wanted to find records I would keep, wanted to find records that I've been looking for for a very long time. Um, and I think I did that and I got a lot of great stuff and I'm gonna show it to you all now instead of doing a boring ass normal vinyl finds at home for the month of January, uh, I'm going to show what I got here at the record fair. Um, I'm gonna start from the back of the bag because I feel like the back of the bag is the, um, it, it's almost in chronological order, but not quite. But actually I'm gonna show the, the best find first because that's what's here. Um, Elf, Elf titled, self-titled. Um, God, I've been looking for this record forever. Every time I see an original, it is crazy overpriced. Every time I see a reissue, it's kind of crazy overpriced. And uh, I can never find the Elf stuff for a good price. Um, now this one does have, it's got a couple marks on it, but aside from that, could not pass this up. I don't know if this is like a first, first press or not. I don't know the, the pressing history of this very well. But like I said, a record that I've been on the hunt for for so long to get into my collection. Very, very happy to finally find it. Should I say this is Dio? This is Dio um, before Black Sabbath, before Rainbow. Uh, Dio was an elf. This is the first elf, I believe the first elf record. I think there's three. Carolina Country Ball is one. There might be a third one, but unbelievable. I about shit my pants when I saw this. This was one of those things where it's like, I saw it. I felt like I was, <laughs> I felt like I was trying to like, steal something from a store, you know? Cause I just saw it and I was like, I need to walk away from this table so fast before somebody else tries to get this, you know? Um, yeah, incredible, incredible find. Couldn't be happier. That was a huge get. Um, so these next two came from the same seller. Got a copy of a record I've been looking for for a very long time, Sly and the Family Stone Stand. Uh, every time I see this record, it's beat to shit. And when it's not beat to shit, it's very expensive. $2 copy of Slime the Family Stone Stand, which I was very excited about. Um, again, you know, it's not mint, but the few marks that are on here are not crazy. It's pretty clean for a $2 copy, I would say. Now this, this seller, it was interesting because he had a lot of like new sealed stuff. He had a lot of like Target and Walmart records and shit. Um, and then he had a box of records that were half off. So it was half off what was ever, whatever was on the sticker. And I don't think he, really knew a lot of what he had because for instance the half off record I got from him like he had no idea what it was and I think if he did 
he went out of market. <laughs> uh, but I've been trying to get this record on vinyl for quite some time. This is Dog Eat Dog with All Boro Kings. This is a 90s New York hardcore record. That is kind of ridiculous. There's like some ska parts to this. There's some very like silly, corny New York parts to this, but that's exactly the type of hardcore I like. Um, but yeah, incredible record. So 21, this ended up being basically 10 bucks after half off music on vinyl press now funny enough i walked by there were some records that i saw multiple times throughout the the show that i was really surprised to see more than once you know um this is one of them somebody actually had an original uh european press of this for 20 bucks if i had seen that first maybe i would have gotten it but I'll take the music on vinyl repress for 10. This isn't a record that I'm like dying to own a first press of. I just really wanted to own it on vinyl. The music on vinyl press seems to come in and out of print. Um, but yeah, I was really, really just to, to get this one. That's one I've been looking to uh, add to my clutch for quite some time. Oh man, another long time get. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's only worth it to come to the show if you got cash to spend. And, and I'm not, I'm not bragging about how much I spent here. Um, I got really good deals on pretty much everything. But again, it's stuff like this where it's like, I never see this record in the wild anymore. Patty Smith Horses. Um, I did see it once last year at Half Price Books. Uh, if you can see that was 30, now 15. Um, Half Price Books copy was also 15 bucks, but the condition was really poor. So <laughs> see, this says mice DNA. So uh, it, it's, got, it's got the cat chewed spine, but the record itself is in really good shape has the original Arista company sleeve, really, really clean wax. Um, and it's, the the jacket on this is really thick. It's, it's, it's like a thick cardboard, almost like a Stoughton style jacket. Um, again, I'm not an expert on the pressing of this, but I definitely don't know if I've seen it with, uh, with the thick cardboard cover before. So yeah, a classic, classic record that I just, has been avoiding me for quite some time. Um, all right, the next seller, he was doing, um, I started to find through records. I picked out one I really wanted, saw a couple that I kind of wanted, but put back. I mean, this is one of those things. It's so big. There's so many dealers. There's, it's impossible to go through every single table, but when you have a certain amount of money and you're buying <laughs> records and you realize you've only gone through two aisles, it kind of makes the rest of your journey more selective, you know? So I was being very particular, but there were a couple things that I was intentionally looking out for. I didn't go in here with a list of wants or anything. I went in here with a couple ideas. Um, one thing I wanted to look for is some JJ Kale. Um, I've been getting more into JJ Kale. I post about JJ Kale on Instagram. Um, I posted his album Really uh, recently, which I like a lot. Um, you know, not quite blues rock, not quite country rock, not quite anything, just like fucking great music. Uh, but yeah, I guess this is his first album from 1971. This is Naturally. Um, so I found this, I knew I was gonna get this immediately when I saw it in the bins. But I put a couple things back and I don't know if, you know, the dealer was doing his dealer thing where he saw me put things back and then tried to get the sale on me, you know? Um, you guys know how record dealers are. <laughs> um, but he was like, well, if you buy one, you can get a second one half off. And I thought, I ended up getting basically 15 bucks for the pair. So this is basically 10 bucks. And I basically paid five bucks for this Teenage Head record, uh, Frantic City. You know, not a band I've been actively seeking out, but I know a band that a lot of people like. The couple tracks I've heard from this band I enjoy. Um, this says A Canada Ramones, which is pretty much accurate. There's some great Canadian rock power pop. One of these dudes I know passed away recently. Um, don't remember who, but uh, very, very respected bands. I saw a lot of people in 2023 show Teenage Head records. And um, yeah, I thought for I, like I said, I ended up paying five bucks for this. I thought that was uh, plenty fair for, for those two. So got a really good deal on this. Uh, this was another record that I was like, if I see this, I'm gonna get it. Uh, the debut album by Area Code 615. Um, in a vinyl update some odd months ago, I showed the second album by Area Code 615. This was a group of Nashville studio musicians, a lot of whom ended up working with Neil Young on Harvest. Uh, which is how I ended up to learning about this band. Um, and they only had two records. Um, they have the second record, which the name escapes me now, I think it's called A View of the Country, I think. This one is self-titled, but David Briggs, Kenny Buttry, Elliot Mazur, those were all Neil Young dudes. Um, Charlie McCoy is on this, who I know has played on a lot of stuff as well. 
Um, so yeah, this ended up being, the cigars is 15, this ended up being 10 bucks from the dealer deal. In the shrink, um, obviously not sealed, but on Polydor. This was one record that I was definitely looking for uh, and was hoping to get and was very happy to find it. Thought that was a, a good price. This stuff, you know, it's not like crazy, crazy rare, um, but 10 bucks is about what you pay for those in good condition, so. Um, and the last thing I got, so I I had gone through all the aisles I thought I would go through. I was being very selective. I, you know, any of the psych bins, I looked through. Any of the metal bins, I looked through. Anything that said like, you know, punk new wave, I looked through all those bins. So I had five bucks left and the smart thing would have been just walk away. You got, oh. <laughs> I knew that was gonna fall at some point. The smart option would have been just, uh, just walk away with, oh my God. Just walk away with five bucks and call it a day. Walk away with five bucks, call it a day. But again, I drove all the way out here. <laughs> so I tried looking for some bins that said, you know, two for five or whatever. Cause here's the thing is I didn't, I didn't want to spend my time here looking at a bunch of like dollar bin bullshit. Cause I do that often enough. I was not here to find dollar bin bullshit. I find great deals in the dollar bin all year round at record stores and thrift stores. That's all I'm here to do. I came here to find records I never fucking see. Um, now this record I see sometimes, I don't see it all the time, um, but this is a really, really clean copy. And I basically guilt tripped the dude and given it to me for five bucks because he had it for six. And he was like, good, I already marked it down. And I was like, well, guess what? I have a $5 bill right here. And he was like, okay. <laughs> but shiny, shiny, shiny vinyl of Crowbar, Bad Manners. Obviously not the sludge metal Crowbar. This is a record from the seventies. Um, this is some great underground um, hard rock. This is uh, one of the cheaper underground hard rock records you can get uh, if you are in to the underground, the under you know, hard rock and psych and proto metal stuff. Um, this record is, you can get this record for 10 bucks or under most of the time, I believe. Uh, and I had just been kind of waiting to find a copy that was in good shape. This copy's in great shape, got it for five bucks. Um, so this was, again, and something I've been looking for for quite some time. So kind of a perfect, uh, perfect way to cap off the trip. So. Um, anyway, thank you for joining me in my vinyl finds. Uh, I don't know what next week's video is going to be. Uh, I might do some CD finds actually next week, uh, but I got a couple other things brewing. So, um, peace and love. See everybody next time.